Hi guys, and you're back for the microscopic cross-section tutorial. Now the cross-section measures the probability of one type of reaction occurring between a neutron and a single nucleus as distinct from another. And it's given the term of microscopic cross-section and we denote it by using the lowercase symbol sigma. So sigma is our microscopic cross-section. If we look at the neutron reactions, for every reaction it will have its own value for the microscopic cross-section. So for overall reactions, we can say that's sigma t. So that's our total microscopic cross-section. And that's made up of our absorption microscopic cross-section, sigma a, which is then made up of sigma t, which is our transmutation cross-section, sigma c, which is our capture cross-section, and sigma f, which is our fission cross-section. And on the other side, we have sigma s, which is our scattering cross-section. And as we said previously, we only ever deal with elastic scattering collisions when looking at that. So whenever we see uh, sigma s, we're talking about elastic collisions. So the microscopic cross-section can really be defined as the amount of target area that a nucleus exposes to our neutron. I'm now going to use an analogy to describe a cross-section or a microscopic cross-section. I'm going to put our neutron out here in free space and say that it's got a pair of eyes. Okay, It can see where it's going. Now it's looking into the sky and what we've got here is our moon in the sky, which we'll consider to be our target nucleus. Now, on a full moon, that target nucleus is exposing um, pr pretty much all of itself to our neutron, or our neutron can see all of it. It's worth you noting here that cross-section isn't the same as the geometric area. Okay, it's slightly different. But, full moon, we can see all of that um, area. Now, what happens when that moon changes position in the solar system relative to the sun is that we can actually get like a half moon or a crescent moon. And now what's happened here is that the moon is only exposing this part of itself to our neutron. Or our neutron can only see that part of our moon. It doesn't mean that the whole moon is not there, but it's only exposing this fraction of it. And that's the microscopic cross-section, if you like. And the thing that dictates how much it can see is the energy of our neutron. In general terms, we can say that for a high-energy neutron, the cross-section it can see will be very small. But for a low-energy neutron, that area increases, and it can see much more of that target nucleus. Okay, and that's a good general description of the microscopic cross-section. And actually, it's the energy of our neutron which has a big impact of how much it sees. Now, it's worth putting this into context in terms of size. And again, we're dealing with subatomic uh, particles here. So we're using very small units. And the units we use are measured in barns, where one barn equals one times 10 to the minus 28 meters squared. Okay, so it's an area, but it's a very, very small area. What I'd like to do now is look at the cross-section for uh, two different materials, if you like. So I'm going to look at the scattering cross-section for light water, and we're going to look at the fission cross-section for uh, uranium-235. Okay, so let's start with the scattering cross-section for light water. So here we've got the um, cross-section measured in barns as our y-axis. And the x-axis is our neutron energy in EV. And if I draw the shape of the curve on for us, it looks something like this, going out to high-energy neutrons. And really, from this, what we can say is that for a high-energy neutron somewhere out here, again, that target nucleus, or our moon, is only exposing a, a small uh, portion of its area, if you like. Or our neutron is only seeing that much of the nucleus. And that means the probability of this reaction occurring, this scattering collision, is, is low. But if our neutron slows down and we start to track up our curve, we're increasing the probability of that reaction occurring because now our nucleus, the moon, is showing more of itself to that neutron. And that's why our probability is increasing of that reaction occurring. So you can see from a high energy to a low energy neutron, you can see the effect that has on that cross-section for light water. And in light water, it's that hydrogen nucleus, which is our target nucleus. Okay, let's do the same now for, uh, for uranium-235, and let's look at the cross-section for uranium-235. Again, our axes are the same. We have our y-axis measuring the cross-section in barns, and the x-axis is now measuring our neutron energy again in EV. And if I draw the curve on for us, it looks something like this. And again, what we're saying here really is that for a high-energy neutron down here, we're only seeing a very small part of that target nucleus or our moon, or that target nucleus is only exposing 
a very small part of its area to us. And again, that means our probability of that reaction occurring, in this case a fission reaction, is very, very low. Again, if we slow our neutron down and it starts to track up this curve, what we're doing here is that our nucleus is now exposing more of itself, or our neutron is seeing more of it, and actually till we get to the point up here where actually a lot of that nucleus is now exposed. And actually, we're getting towards that point where we're looking at a, you know, a full moon again in terms of our analogy. If that point there, track that down, if we look at the energy level, the point where we've got a high probability of that uh, reaction occurring is with a neutron energy of around about 0 0.025. Okay, that's a thermal energy neutron, which then gives us a good probability of that fission reaction occurring. So that's two examples for microscopic cross-section, looking at two different uh, nucleus, if you like. But I hope it gives you a good idea of actually how we increase the probability of these reactions occurring. We'll finish that here, but the next tutorial, I'd like to develop this idea to look at the probability of reactions occurring in a unit length of material.